Hello, one all. You Doc Stone, Chapter 204. The universe is written in language and mathematics. And hey, Ryu is a brother. Yay! A brother who seems to be just so overwhelmingly terrified of him that he runs away as soon as he sees him. So that was interesting. I mean, seriously, Sai, where exactly were you planning on running to? I mean, it should be very obvious that there is no civilization anywhere near you. And if he really is as smart as Ryu claims, he probably has a fairly good idea of, you know, how much time has passed since he was petrified. Actually, probably has a better idea than Senku does. I mean, Senku's calculations of the date were a bit rough based on his own counting, and I think he completely skipped over leap years, but Sai, I mean, he is a true 100% genius. He can do the math in his head easily, so I think, you know, next chapter, we'd see Senku saying, oh, it's October 1st, 5750, and Sai countering, no, it's not, it's October 5th, 5750, and the current time at the beep will be 3.45 p.m. Beep! I think that'd be very interesting to see, you know, Sai actually give a correct day. It'd be a great way of showing how truly brilliant Sai really is. Maybe that could lead to, you know, them creating a full timeline for the series, showing everything that's happened and when it's happened in relation to the other events. Senku waking up would be year zero in the new calendar, the essay, Senku's Awakening Calendar. <laughs> oh, I'd love to see that. I freaking love to see that. I really do want a more accurate timeline of when all this happened. But anyway, you still have the question, why did Sai run away? Why is Sai so overwhelmingly afraid of Ryu? And I'm seeing some interesting theories online. A lot of people seem to think that Sai and Ryu are actually half-brothers, given that Sai is half-Indian. That would make a certain amount of sense. I mean, Ryu's father, if he is even a fraction as desirous as Ryu is, he's probably known quite a few women in the biblical sense, if you know what I'm saying. So we could have a whole bunch of kids scattered throughout the world. And, you know, maybe Sai isn't treated as well because he's not a uh, son of, you know, uh, Ryu's father's wife. So therefore, he's considered inferior. I mean, this does seem somewhat possible given how snooty Ryu's father and his friends seem to be. I could definitely see them looking down on someone who's born out of wedlock, not, you know, a true heir to the company, stuff like that. But Sai's problem seems to be with Ryu himself. As he says, I refuse to return to the company. Well, that's as long as you're involved. So it's definitely Ryu he's mad at. Definitely Ryu he's afraid of. And why would that be? I mean, the best explanation I come up with is basically that Ryu wanted to use Sai's intelligence to make the company even more prosperous. I mean, Sai's a freaking supercomputer. Imagine all the ways that Ryu could use him to make the company even more profitable. He could save tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars by using Sai to his fullest. And I can't imagine him, you know, working Sai basically to the bone to the point of complete and utter exhaustion. And Sai wanted to escape, that's why he fled to India. Though it's also possible that Sai was just, you know, bored. I mean, yes, doing the books for a Fortune 500 company, doing the books for one of the biggest companies in the world, requires far, far more brain cells than I have, but... For Sai, for someone who's as brilliant as he is, it'd be boring. It'd basically be like doing elementary school homework again and again and again. And he wants to do true, exciting math. The kind of math that pushes him to its full limits. And if that's the case, oh boy. I think he's going to really, really like Sanku and his plan to launch, you know, a rocket to the moon. That is true, true math. Especially when he doesn't have access to any sort of computers at all. So that could be a good thing. But if it's more like, you know, Ryu just overworked him, then Senku's plan might, you know, backfire because he's basically asking Sai to do so, so very many calculations that would literally make my brain melt. Not sure about that. Though we also can't forget that Ryu is freaking insane. He's done bungee jumping, skydiving. He fought a bull two chapters ago with absolutely no prior bullfighting experience, just relying on his gut. So imagine the very many ways Ryu could have dragged Sai into his problems. Dragged Sai skydiving, dragged Sai bungee jumping, dragged Sai into fighting an army of cannibals. Whatever crazy, insane things Ryu did, I could definitely see him dragging Sai along for it, and Sai just being like, dude, please, just let me go back to my math, please. I'm begging you. I'm not sure about that, I'm not sure about that. And of course, I'm seeing a lot of people online who are complaining like, Oh, Ryu just happens to have a brother who's a genius mathematician. How lucky is that? And yeah, you know what? It's a little bit lucky, but I think this series has earned it. At no point has any character said, Oh, I have a brother, a sister, a mother, a father, a son, an uncle, a cousin, who's a genius at X, and we need someone who's good at X. Let's go wake them up. I mean, just think about how massive this cast is. Yuzu, Taiju, Hyoga, Homura, Stanley, Zeno, Chelsea, Luna, Brody, Charlotte, Maya, Nikki. There's so many characters, and no point has any of them ever asked Senku, hey, can we go wake up my relative, my cousin, uh, because he's really good at this thing we need him to be good at? It's never happened before. So yeah, it's not weird at all that someone in this cast has a relative who's actually good at something they need. Huzzah! Of course, other people are like, well, why hasn't Ryu mentioned his brother before? And you know, that's a fairly good point, but 
When in this series has anyone ever mentioned a relative? I mean, seriously, can you think of any times besides, you know, Senku talking about his father who literally restarted all of humanity or Sukasa, you know, Sukasa didn't even really mention his sister, just told a story about a little girl and didn't even say, oh, that was about my sister. I mean, the kingdom of science is entirely focused on reviving all of humanity and getting things up and running again. And they aren't really focused on, you know, their old funny uncle who had three toes in one foot and six toes in the other. I mean, the only exception I can really think of would be Luna. She mentioned that her father's connections got her into medical school, despite the fact that she really, really didn't deserve to be there. Which is why I really, really think that Luna's father is going to be important down the road, and that he's secretly the Y man. <laughs> Though, of course, you know, there is a danger in overthinking things in this series. I mean, last chapter is going on and on about this damn, like, oh, it has to be man-made. Clearly, this is a sign of some sort of civilization living here. It's a, it means this, it means that, it means that. And, you know, oh, the rocket didn't actually blast a hole through it, so they're going to have to blast more rockets at it, do things like this. Go to it and see there's, you know, humans around it, and they had to build the dam. No! Uh, Senku just ran the Perseus right through it, and that worked! Huzzah! That was way, way easier than I expected. Uh, but you know what? It worked. It makes sense. The rocket managed to loosen up enough where the Perseus was able to break through it. Though I still think there should have been some danger in, you know, the dam not breaking and the ship just, you know, smashing into it at very, very fast speeds and everyone, you know, basically flying forward, smashing their heads and dying. But that didn't happen! Yay! And then Kohaku finally asked the question I've been asking for the last 100 freaking chapters. What exactly does math city mean? And as it turns out, they're actually looking for mathematicians, people who can do the calculations. And Ryu's company even founded a university that is chock full of professors and students who can do these calculations, who can get them to the moon without killing them. Yay! Honestly, it's kind of amazing Senku's quick calculations haven't gotten anyone killed up to this point. But when it comes to NASA, they are super duper precise, going up to 15 decimal places. Oh my god, that is a terrifying, terrifying level of accuracy. I literally can't wrap my mind around it. And apparently in India, they are really, really focused on math education, even teaching the times tables up to double digits. 99 times 99. Oh my god, I am very glad I was not born in India or I would have failed out of school. Seriously, I struggle enough just learning the single digits timetables. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, days Goliath, had to wait. Yeah, I went to a Christian school, so even our math lessons were Bible-based. That, that, that was interesting, that was interesting. Though not as interesting as our science lessons because they were legally forced to teach us about evolution, but started every class by explaining, okay, now we need to teach about evolution, but just know this is all lies and not actually true. <laughs> oh, that was fun. That was, that was a very weird experience looking back. But anyway, I did see someone online say this wasn't necessarily true all that much anymore. Like in the past it was, but now they teach up to like 19 times 19. That's it. And that seems, you know, way, way more manageable. That's something I probably maybe could have handled. Maybe not. But anyway, then they arrive in India on October 1st, 3750, or whatever the actual date is, which I'm sure Sai is going to tell them. I really hope Sai is telling them the actual date. I would love that. And the very, very first thing they do is make some curry. <laughs> oh, I love how their palates are getting, you know, a full journey across the world. And Chrome, Chrome is very much not used to spicy foods like this. And I don't blame him. I do not handle spicy foods at all. And my reaction will probably be about the same. And they're all just really grateful they managed to get through the Suez Canal without having to wait a full freaking year to refuel. And yeah, that would have been bad. That would have been very, very bad. I mean, I'm pretty sure Chalk and the pig would have died of old age if they had to wait that long. But Kohaku, you know, she's more concerned about the fact that when she finally goes to wake up her sister, if they take too long, she might end up being the older sister. <laughs> oh, that'd be heartbreaking. That'd be very, very heartbreaking for her. And you know, we can definitely see this bond between them because she's absolutely 100% certain that Rui would have made sure that everyone got into a defensive position before they were petrified. She would have protected the village, making sure that when, you know, eventually Suka and everyone else gets back there, they're able to save everyone. They're able to revive everyone. No one's going to be damaged all that much. Though this does raise an interesting question. Exactly how long can a statue be broken for before it degrades to the point where it can't be fixed, where the pieces can't be put back together? I mean, Yuzu was stitching people back together, you know, just days after Sukasa broke them. And, you know, they seemed to be okay, but what if, like, a year, two years passed? Would that be enough time? Would, like, five, ten years being too much time? I'm honestly not sure about that. I mean, I think it was said back, uh, you know, on the Treasure Island arc that Soyuz's father couldn't be revived because his face had been broken for, you know, like, over ten years. So, at least ten years is too much. One year might be too much. I'm honestly not sure about that. 
We really do just get a good moment here as Quark was talking about their bond as siblings. And we get to see Ryu's bond with Sai because even though Sai is just so overwhelmingly afraid of him, Ryu knows him very well. He knows exactly where Sai would be at 9.30 in the morning, exactly where he'd be, exactly what he'd been doing, really showing just how well he knows Sai, how well he knows his brother and how much he really does care about him. And then we see a very, very strange pose between Chelsea and Sanku as they declare they're going to go find Sai. And they do it. Amazingly enough, they're able to find his exact location after 3,000 freaking years. So good for them. They are both just so brilliant and so fun seeing them do a combo attack like that. And then they actually find Sai and he looks like a Hindu deity. Which is, is honestly kind of creepy. It's honestly kind of terrifying. I mean, I guess there's the other, like, three people who are petrified behind him. But just the way they managed to land on top of one another was just so, so creepy. And then they wake him up. Yay! And I do love his appearance. I mean, the crack scars on his arms, just, they're so next level. His hands are literally black. It's so freaking cool. I guess it's supposed to be, you know, a reference to how he's going to be continually working with pens and ink and just writing notes again and again to do the calculations to figure out how exactly to get Senko to the freaking moon. And he has a C and a plus on his belt. I guess that's the programming language, C+. If he was working on a computer, he was doing the simulations, he could have been writing the code for it as well. So that makes a certain amount of sense. I mean, Senko and Ryu said they came to Mass City to find mathematicians, but... But there's only so much math you can really do on pen and paper, so so are they actually going to end up building a computer or a calculator this arc? I mean, if Sai is actually, you know, good at programming, he could be very, very helpful in that endeavor, and I would so, so love to see that. Oh my god, I hope that's, I hope they spent a lot of time in India actually building computers. That'd be so much fun. I'm seeing a lot of people online who are worried about the pacing, like, oh no, they're probably going to spend like two or three chapters in India and then move on to the next destination, and... I really don't think that's the case. I mean, Spain was, yeah, Spain was brief, but Spain was never on the map. It was never, you know, a fluorite city that they were planning on going to. That was just a quick pit stop so they could start up a new city there and, you know, get their hands on olive oil. But India's been on the map for 100 chapters. They've been wanting to go to India. This is a major destination for them. They need, you know, spend time here to build things up to figure out what to do next and all that. Plus... I'm pretty sure they're, you know, basically out of fuel. So, yeah, they need to spend a lot of time in India, and hopefully, you know, we can actually get to see this. No major time skips. We actually get to see Sai, you know, Sai's friends, all of them working together to rebuild technology, to remake computers, do all the math that's necessary to get Senku to the moon. I so, so want to see all that. And he does seem to be, like, a genuinely nice guy. I mean, he turns to Jen, he's like, could, could it really be? Did you people save me? Thank you so much! And then he turns around and sees Ryu's smiling face, and he just kind of freezes for a second before just screaming bloody murder and running away in the opposite direction until Kwaku stops him. <laughs> Which, you know, Kwaku probably saved his life. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not exactly sure what the wildlife is like in India, but I have to imagine there's, you know, a whole bunch of things out there that could have killed him. That could have killed him very, very easily if she hadn't brought him back. And yeah, that's basically the chapter. I'm guessing next week's gonna be, you know, Ryu and Sanku trying to convince Sai to join their side to join the new kingdom of science. I mean, Sai definitely has, you know, some reservations about working with his brother, but if Sanko explains their goal is to actually get them to the freaking moon, I feel like Sai, as a true mathematician, as someone who loves math, will be all on board for that, will be super excited for that endeavor, for that project, and want to be part of it. Just not so much a part of the Nanami Corp, just not so much part of Ryu's plans for, you know, what's basically world domination. I mean, that might sound like a bit of an exaggeration, but Ryu literally reintroduced currency just so he could rule over people. Yeah, uh, Ryu is basically already taking over the world. I mean, he owns Spain, more or less. Everyone in Spain is technically working for him, and he is the only ship that can go between ports, so he's the only one that can bring in, you know, supplies. That, therefore, he can set his own price for literally anything. He is a god of this world right now. More than Sanku, Ryu is a god of this world, and Sai should definitely fear him for that. Uh, and then there's, you know, the actual Indian people, the people of India, and that's... That's going to be interesting. I mean, Sai, you know, maybe he has friends in the college, maybe his friends, the locals, and he'll be able to talk things over, smooth things over, and convince them, hey, we should work with this guy. But Sai also spent his free time on the roof of the school to make sure that nobody bothered him, so there's a very good chance he might not have all that many friends, and therefore Sang and the rest of them are going to have to win over India on their own, which, like I said in my last video, is going to be a bit of an issue, a bit tricky. I mean, India's history is just, you know, rife with exploitation and being 
uh, Rob from again and again and again. So when Sam could arrest them, show up and say, hey, we're, you know, foreigners. We're here. Take your resources. They're going to be a little bit hesitant to trust them. And I could really see, you know, an enemy, a war going on in India, this next arc, which basically be Senku trying to win people over and the people being like, no, you're trying to enslave us. You're evil. We've fallen forward way too many times in the past. We're not going to let it happen again. But let me think all this down below. Why do you think Sai doesn't trust Ryu? Why do you think he's so terrified of Ryu? Is it just that Ryu took advantage of him, used his brain to make money? Is it because Ryu dragged him on crazy adventures and nearly got him killed time and time again? Or do you think it's for some other reason? A question of inheritance, a question of, you know, Ryu is technically the younger brother, so therefore Sai should have inherited the company, taken it, but Ryu's greed and desire resulted in their father handing it off to him instead of to Sai? I mean, that would make a certain amount of sense. Uh, how do you think the people of India are going to react to Senku waking them up? And what exactly is Senku's goal in India? I mean, they need to spend a while here. Like I said before, they need to refuel the ship. They need more bio waste, all that. So they're going to spend at least a couple of months in India, and they're going to need to build up something. I mean, like I said before, I really would like to see them make computers. I think it'd be so cool to see. And since I was working on his computer, and since he literally has C plus written on his belt buckle, I could really see him being a computer expert enough to help Senku actually build one. That'd be so amazing. Link the down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, to the next video. Until then, peace.